jump right into this stenciling like a pro. Now you want to empty some of your paint out and it's pretty important how you load your brush. You want to dip it into the paint to get all the bristles uh, wet with paint and then swirl it around like this just to really saturate those bristles and make that paint distribute evenly. Now I'm wiping off all the excess onto a paper towel. You always wanna start pretty dry and then add paint as needed. That way you have total control over how your stencil designs come out. I'm starting off with this fun little design that we just went over in the materials. And I'm placing, I've taped it down to a piece of poster board and I'm just getting my placement right. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the design. Now this is great right here. You wanna really be mindful that you don't put your tape on your stencil design. You wanna make sure that that is totally free and clear of that. Now I went ahead and loaded my brush with the asphaltum color, the folk art, and um, I offloaded it just like I showed a second ago. And now I'm just going over this full design with one color. And it's it really is best to start dry and then just go back and add some more paint and offload a little bit of it every time. This style of stenciling is a little bit more uh, labor intensive than just using a sponge makeup applicator or something else like that. Now this is for, this is how I used to do people's walls. Um, I had a lot of clients that wanted stenciled borders and different kind of murals with different designs. And this is a sure way to make sure your work is really tight. There's that design. Stencil brushes are not my favorite way to work. Here's another one with a few different colors so you can really play around with how you want to approach this and how you want to make things look. Now we'll go ahead and do a couple flowers on this book page to show you some blending techniques. But um, you absolutely can do this on your walls. You want to make sure not to do it in a high moisture area. I would never do uh, any kind of stenciling like this in the bathroom, just because um, now you can if you use house paint. So you would have to have all your colors in house paint, and then it would be fine in, the, in a high moisture area. But if you're in bedrooms or the kitchen, even the kitchen, you want to be a little careful, but bedrooms and living rooms and dens and places like that, uh, craft paints work perfect. You don't want to, of course, be wiping your walls. You don't want to put this in an area that's always needing to have the walls cleaned. So that's something to keep in mind here. Now, I went sporadically with the blue just to get it on the flower design. But you don't, when you're blending your colors, you don't have to worry about putting that your color in every place because you're going to make up for that with other colors plus you can always come back and add more color as needed now i didn't tape this off this time and i should have i got a little lazy and um as you can see i got a little bit of paint on my table as well so don't do what I'm doing here if you want everything to be to line up easily. Uh, sometimes I get to be a bit of a hack and usually it's fine. If your design is not real complicated and hard to line up again, you'll be fine. So here's this design with the blended beautiful colors on the book page and the white spatter is definitely a little distracting in the background, but You'll just want to keep things like that in mind for whatever background you have. Now here's this little flower and I went ahead and covered the whole thing with blue for the most part. Now I'm adding some of that bleached sand color and I'm just pouncing it in. And I think I was saying it earlier, there's two ways 
to apply paint with a br uh, stencil brush. You can pounce it in like I'm doing here, or you can apply it with a circular motion. And both ways work really well. And you'll find that whatever your background is, um, you're gonna go ahead and do either one of these. Here's the circular motion I'm using right here. So not to worry if you don't get your colors quite right, like I was saying as well. You can come back and redo that. I wanted to show this little edged flower here because I placed a paper towel under the my paper and the stencil, of course, to protect my table because I want this little design to go off the edge here. And this is just another great example of blending. Now, you can't get this blending control of course, with a makeup applicator or a sponge. I really haven't found any other way other than a stencil brush to get this kind of blending control that I like to use. So stencil brushes really are a powerful tool when you wanna have really concise, tight stenciling and have a lot of control over your color blending. Here I overlapped a flower. This is quick little view of this flower page here. Now I wanna go ahead and do this leaf, uh, little leaf design to show you real quick. And this is just real simple. So I love to use poster board. I think I'm using some kind of canvas backing on this one just because that's what I had handy but use whatever you've got handy to protect your table, no big deal. I don't ever get hung up or worried about things like that because it's just a waste of time and energy, I think. So now I've just taped down my stencil on one side so that I can open and close that. And then of course I secured my paper so that if uh, when I do lift up to look at my design, I can do it easily without anything moving on me. This is the absolute best way to do it on paper. Now, if you're working on a wall, just go ahead and tape your stencil down to the wall. And a lot of stencils have register marks. So you can use your register marks to line things up if you have multi layered stencils. So uh, everything in the stencil world has really been made very user friendly and easy and layered stencils as a rule really do have register marks so i have never seen a layered stencil design that does not come with that so just look for those and um, throw a little pencil mark in on those register marks and it'll line right up for you on the wall you can also do that on canvas or paper too with the register marks. So here I've made that little door hinge with the tape just so that I could pop this over and take a peek. Now here's the samples of this uh, stenciling on the, my hand painted paper. Now the feathers, this one, I just flipped the stencil over on the two brown ones to get the mirror image. That's how I did that one. Now let's talk about adding a shadow. This is a really great little technique to uh, add a professional look to stenciling like a pro. Now, when you use this technique, some stencils are better than others with it. So you'll just have to experiment. Now you wanna let your initial design dry completely and then line it up like I am here and then pull the whole stencil down. You can pull it down to the left, down to the right. You can pull it up to the left or right, but you never, well, you could, I shouldn't say never. You don't really wanna go straight up or straight down it doesn't tend to have that really nice effect that it does when you pull the stencil down or up at an angle. So that's just a little something to keep in mind. Now, I am very lightly hitting all the areas that are white and I'm just dusting over them the tiniest bit. 
you want to make sure not to go over the uh, darker brown colors because it'll just kind of muck it up a little bit. What you want to do is just very lightly hit it. And then I took it off to look and I had missed this line right here that I'm doing. So it's very easy to take it off. And you can, of course, tape your little door hinge piece of tape if you wish to, to make it easier. Here's a bit of a close up of that shadowing. And this really adds great effect to a lot of designs. Now on this little image, I pounced on some beautiful metallic gold. So play with your colors, play with your stencils. I hope you have a great time with this. It's very easy to get professional looking stencil designs with this technique. I'll see you next time.